Okay, so we did adding subtracting the four fractions and multiplying dividing, which was probably easier. Fractions, now let's mix it all up, make sure we know what we're doing in all of it. So remember, the two, actually there's three different rules. For adding subtracting, it's the same rule. What you need to do first is you need a common denominator. which I know most of you roll your eyes when you're like, oh, that's the hard one. Yeah, there's more work involved in adding subtracting. Multiplying was easy. You just, you just did it. So I'll just steal Mikey's phrase here. You just do it. Easy. And with dividing, what you do is keep the first fraction, and then you change to multiply, change the divide to a multiply, and you then you flip the second fraction. We didn't need a comma there, but whatever. Okay, so if you need refreshers on those, go back to the other videos and hopefully that'll do it for you. Let's take a look just to refresh our memories on these identical looking questions, but they all have different operations. Three fifths plus one sixth, three fifths minus one sixth, three fifths times one sixth, three fifths divided by one sixth. Okay, um, adding. You need a common denominator, like it says here. You need a common denominator when you add between 5 and 6. The simplest way is just to multiply five by 5 and 6, and you get 30. Sometimes that gives you the lowest common denominator. And in this case, it does. So that works for you. What times 5 gives you 6? Sorry, what times 5 gives you 30? 6 does. Do the same to the top. 3 times 6, 18. Don't forget the plus. What times 6 gives you 30? 5 does. Do the same to the top. 5 times 1 is 5. And remember the second part of that rule was add the tops, leave the bottom. 18 plus 5 is 23. And leave the bottom 30. Can you reduce it? Nope. That's it. Okay. Uh, the good thing about using the same question is we don't have to do the, all that math to get the common denominator. It's the same question, just the subtracting, so obviously the common denominator is going to be 30, and the numbers are all the same, so let's just steal the numbers from here. It's going to be 18 over 30 minus 5 over 30. Again, the reason for that is it's the exact same question. Just the minus sign there. Subtract the tops. 18 minus 5 is 13. 30 stays the same. 13 over 30 is the final answer because you can't reduce it. 3 fifths times 1 sixth. So 3 fifths times 1 sixth. What just happened there? Um, there we are. Okay. 3 fifths times 1 sixth. It's easy. You just do it. 3 times 1, 3, 5 times 6, 30, check to reduce, ooh, 3 can go into both these numbers, 3 goes into there once, 3 goes in there 10 times, you're left with 1 over 10. On to dividing, remember dividing, keep the first fraction, change the divide to a multiply, and then flip, 6 goes on top, 1 goes on the bottom. 6 goes on top, 1 goes on the bottom. 1 6 becomes 6 over 1. We just multiply. 3 times 6 is 18. 5 times 1 is 5. Are we done? No. That's improper. Big number on top. We need to change it to a mixed fraction. How many times does 5 go into 18? 3 times. That gives you 15. We're left over with 3. So a 3 goes there, and we leave the 5 in the bottom, it's 3 and 3 fifths. Okay, now, mixed numbers, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Let's do this. Remember, with, with mixed numbers, first thing, can change to improper. Sometimes you can just do this the old-fashioned way or some other method, but 100% of the time, if you change to improper, it always works. Two t sorry, 4 times 2 plus 3. Remember, this is what you do to change to an improper fraction. The bottom number times the big number plus the top number. 
4 times 2 is 8, plus 3, 11. Leave the bottom number 4. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, over 6. We're subtracting. What's the common denominator between 4 and 6? The lowest one is not 24, and a lot of you thinking, oh, just multiply and get 24. Well, that's not the lowest one. Again, you could use it, but it will give you some extra work later on. I'm going to pick 12, because I know that 6 times 2 is 12, and 4 times 3 is 12, so 12 will work for both of them. How did 4 become 12? Times by 3. Do the same to the top. 11 times 3? 33. Don't forget the subtracting sign. How did 6 become 12? Times by 2. Do the same to the top. 7 times 2 is 14. When we subtract 33 minus 14, you get 19 over 12. Here, you have an improper fraction. We must change that to a mixed. So to do that, 12 goes into 19 once, with 7 left over, over 12. That's it. Alright. Again, same question. Same question. It's just adding. So we can do what we did up there. We can just cheat and use the exact same equivalent fractions. 33 over 12, this time plus 14 over 12. Add the tops, leave the bottom. Again, this only works if all the questions are the same, which is, sorry to say, not going to happen for you, where you have four questions the same when you actually do your uh, assignment. So when you add these together, uh, you have 47 on top over 12. How many times does 12 go into 47? Well, we know that 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4 is 48. Ooh, it's not enough. 3 is going to have to work. 3 goes into there, gives you 36. With how much left over? 11 left over, over 12. Done. Alright, uh, changing, now the multiplying gets easy, but you first, again, you have to convert this to improper. Well, we already did that up here. 4 times 2 plus 3, 11 over 4. 6 times 1 plus 1, 7 over 6. Same thing we did up here. But, this is where it's different. We don't have to find a common denominator, we just do it, because it's multiplying. This gives you 77. 4 times 6. 24. How many times does 24 go into 77? Well, on the side, let's do a little math. 24 times 1 is obviously 24. 24 times 2 is 48. 24 times 3 is 72. 4 times 3 is 12, 3 is 1, 72. That's, that'll work. Obviously, 24 times 4 will be too much. So 3, it goes in 3 times. How much left over? 72 and 77. The difference is 5. 5 left over, over 24. Done. Okay. Uh, so when dividing, change to a multiply and flip. First change to improper. Well, there's the improper fractions. 11 over 4 divided by 7 over 6. Next step change this dividing into a multiply and flip this. Multiply and flip. 6 over 7. This gives you 66 over 28. Now, how many times does 28 go into 66? Does 1? For sure. Does 2? 28 times 2 16 plus 1 is 56. 28 times 3 is not going to work, so 2 is going to be our best bet. How much left over? Well, 56. 66, the difference is 10, so it's 10 left over, over 28. 
reduce this, we know that 2 goes into both of them, 2 goes into here 5 times, 2 goes into there 14 times, you get 2 and 5 over 14. So, by now you should be approaching fraction experthood. Here are your four skill testing questions. Show them to me and I will bestow you with the assignment. Totally do.